Look at a few of the answers in his special report, Dying with Dignity. I'm comfortable talking about the issue, although it's something that we all have to face sooner or later. Members of the baby boomer generation are facing some difficult questions about death with aging parents or grandparents. Death can always come suddenly, but more often today, it's a prolonged process. That process can be both complicated and uncomfortable. Tonight, Steve Phillips begins a special report that addresses some of the complex and a lot of times controversial issues about death and dying. Steve? Well, Miyoka and Jeff, death and dying may not be a comfortable topic, but it is certainly an increasingly popular one. The tremendous interest in this best-selling book is evidence of that. Tuesdays with Maury is the heartwarming journal of a dying man, a former college professor who shares his lessons about life with a former student. Now, one line in this book says death is something everyone has to face, but no one wants to believe it. Tonight, we begin a close-up look at the dying process and some of the difficult issues that often arise with the end of life. 122 over 60. Ah. So I'm alive, anyway. James Hugh Stone is alive, but his doctors expect he'll die in the next few months. A team of hospice caregivers will make his final days as comfortable and meaningful as possible. Providing that kind of support that allows them to die with dignity and have a, a real quality of life to their remaining days is, is real important. And uh, we nurture that and uh, we do all that we can to provide that for them. Well, death with dignity is an attempt to give people some control over their lives at the end of their life. It's an attempt to make people comfortable, to make them comfortable in their own surroundings, surrounded by their own family and the people who care for them the most. Family and friends often surround Mr. Stone's bedside. He remains upbeat in the face of death and prefers not to think much about the inevitable. I know it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And I always wish that I would just pass out in my sleep like that, take the easy way out. Mm -hmm. But I don't guess there's any easy way. <laughs> Hospice caregivers try and make a patient's final days a bit easier in familiar surroundings. You get to know your patients very well mm -hmm. um, because you're coming in and out of their homes and you are in their homes, you know, and they're open to talking to you. You know, you're not in a clinical type setting, you're in their home, so they welcome you, you know, like you're part of the family. Some of the difficult issues and choices about death and dying can be made long before the final days of life. Advanced directives, things like living wills, can provide physicians and caregivers some specific direction about a terminal patient's desires for treatment. James Hugh Stone's family won't need to worry about any unwanted medical machines or treatments to prolong his life. Long ago, he drafted a living will. And he's taken that off of us by signing the living will. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a lot for the elderly to do mm -hmm. because that does take that pressure off Mm -hmm. the people they are left behind. An advanced directive, of course, is an indication from the patient on what they wish to have done at the end of their life, whether they wish to be put on a respirator, whether they wish to be carried through all of the technology we have, which could make a person live for weeks, perhaps longer. No matter how one's life ends, the fear of death is something most everyone experiences, and the thing that leads most often to questions of a spiritual nature. It's the last great mystery. Now, we've learned an awful lot uh, in the modern world, but none of us actually know what it's like to die. And the most spiritual people, priest, rabbi, minister, uh, devout communicants, when the moment for death comes, there's that uncertainty. For just somebody who thinks that just because you're dying, you've got to give up. Well, I intend to last around here as long as I can. One of the more controversial issues of death and dying is the focus of some ongoing debate. Dr. Jack Kevorkian has kept physician-assisted suicide in the national spotlight. We'll explore that issue and other aspects of the dying process tomorrow night. Jeff Mioka. All right, interesting but a difficult topic. Thanks, Steve. But longer than ever, but that same technology has also introduced some difficult questions about the process of dying. Some terminally ill patients choose to take advantage of all the medical science can offer to keep them alive. Others have no desire to be dependent on any type of life support system. There's also the controversial issue of physician-assisted suicide. Steve Phillips concludes his special report tonight with a closer look at some of these difficult questions about death and dying. Steve. 
Well, Jeff and Bianca, generations ago, people died at home. Family and friends then gathered in the home for a celebration of that person's life. Well, times have changed. These days, there's a better chance that you will die in a hospital or nursing home. The dying process also raises tough questions about complex issues, issues like pain management, dying with dignity, and the role of one's physician in that final journey toward the end of life. Tonight, photographer Pat Gibson and I take a closer look at these difficult topics. What about chest pain? You been having any chest pains? Pain is often an unwanted partner for those who are dying. Hospice patient James Hugh Stone takes multiple medications to control the worst of it. A lot of these patients react to pain differently and react to pain medications differently. Mm -hmm. And that I find that is one of my biggest challenges is making sure I can keep my patients pain free. And that's real important to me. Not better than the last time I stuck my head in here. Yeah. Dr. Edwin Davidson understands the importance of pain management. Severe pain is often the overriding symptom as his cancer patients approach death. Because we do reach a point in treating a person where we perhaps have no longer any means of making them live a good quality of life with our medicines and what you really want at that point in time is to give them drugs that will allow them to deal with their pain and still enjoy life. One controversial issue of death and dying has received national attention and debate due largely to the practices and beliefs of one individual. His name is Dr. Jack Kevorkian. The issue is physician-assisted suicide. Uh, that is one of the strong things that Hemlock says. It is your death and you should have a right to plan it. Gigi Sandberg says physician-assisted suicide should simply be another alternative available to a terminal patient, a voluntary decision for someone close to death. And now they are dying alone in hospitals in sterile conditions hooked up to heaven only knows what. Mm -hmm. And they are not being kept alive naturally. I mean, you can't even come back and, and say legitimately, well, this is God's will, this is natural. Well, it, it sort of isn't. Mm -hmm. I think that we do have alternatives to suicide. Mm -hmm. You know, euthanasia is not the answer. And I think that some of those patients have never been given an opportunity to use some of the alternative means, hospice being one of those. James Hugh Stone chose hospice for his terminal care. Not only does he receive medical treatment, his family is also offered support. Of course, nothing actually prepares you for the final. Mm -hmm. But um, they have counseled me on what to expect, mm -hmm. what to do, and I, I just, you know, when the time comes, I guess we'll know, but uh, they do try to prepare you. And preparing for death is never easy, even though it's something all of us will face. Nobody's been there before and come back to tell us about it. Mm -hmm. So it's a scary uh, diagnosis for somebody to be told that this is it. Mm -hmm. James Hugh Stone hopes to outlive his doctor's latest diagnosis. When his wife died 10 years ago, they both gave the doctor some final instructions. We told him, both of us, that we didn't want any of this extended life support systems. Mm -hmm. Our man, the wife's mind was made up, and my mind was made up on that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's the awful thing people being prolonged. Now, Oregon is currently the only state to allow physician-assisted suicide. Since that state's death with dignity law went into effect one year ago, 23 patients have requested prescription drugs to end their lives. To be eligible under Oregon's law, patients must be terminally ill with less than six months to live and must have the authorization from two doctors. Now, our special reports only scratch the surface of the many issues and concerns involved with the subject of death and dying. You can find a wealth of information on the Internet, at your local library, or at the hospital. Jeff and Mioka? All right. Interesting. Thanks, Steve. Still to come.